Acts chapter 23. I know the hour's late. I'll pretend it's not. It's amazing. Last night at this time, I was tired. I guess it has to do with your position on this platform, wherever you are. So I'm in the position tonight that you don't feel tired when you're up here. Amen. I would like to read to you from Acts chapter number 23. I sincerely appreciate the entire Purdue family as well as all of these ministers that are here. The only thing would make me happier about this conference is they'd take a little bit of my time and give it to some more of these men because I love apostolic preaching from men that believe the truth and love the truth. Amen. I read to you from Acts chapter 23, verse number 10, said, And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and bring him into the castle. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. I want to preach to you tonight, I told Brother Gross after hearing he and Brother Alviar preach the Word of God, I uh, told Brother Gross tonight on the way to church that I'm going to have to blame this message on him tonight because uh, I've never preached any of this before, but his message last night about the gathering together of the tares was so inspiring to me that I got to studying and reading my Bible just a little bit today. So I told Brother Gross, I said, if it goes good, you get all the credit. If it goes bad, you get all the blame. Not hardly fair, is it? But I want to preach to you tonight on the unity conspiracy. The unity conspiracy. Let's pray together. God in heaven, I love and worship and magnify, glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I am praying, Lord, for that special touch of the Holy Ghost that I have felt today in my room. I'm praying for the work of the Spirit now. God, come upon us, Lord. Come upon this congregation for the glory and the honor of the Lord. Mighty God, I believe you, Lord. I believe you, God. I believe you, Savior. I believe you, Master. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, glory to God. Talk with our hearts. Talk with our hearts. Talk with our hearts. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Unity, as all of us are well aware of, is an incredibly powerful force. When it is used for God's glory, there are beautiful things that come out of it. 
We are experiencing one of those beautiful things here tonight with this local congregation of the beauty and the blessing as the Lord described about how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When there is a unity in a local church congregation, the favor of God is there. And the Bible said it is like the dew of Mount Hermon. As you stand in the land of Israel, look from the Golan Heights to that beautiful snow-capped mountain called Mount Hermon, and you realize, if you know anything about Mediterranean climates, I happen to because of living in Los Angeles in Southern California, is one of only three places in the world with that type of climate to where you can go months and months and months and months without even a sprinkle, without any rain, without any of that falling down upon the ground. And that's exactly how it is in the land of Israel. But God knew that their water supply and that the growth of their crops that was there would never be able to survive going months without water. And so on top of Mount Hermon, 9,000 foot elevation, God sends snow by all year long. And that snow melts and it runs down. And it is the entire water supply for the entire nation of Israel. And God said that's what unity is like. It is the life giving water supply that's there. You can't live without it. You can't function without it. You have got to have it. It's a part of God's plan. Amen. But the sad part about it is that everything that God ever planned for good, the enemy knows how to pervert it. Amen. Everything that God ever designed for you and I, oftentimes our adversary will use unity often to fight against God. There is an age-old lie that I would like to debunk here at the first of my message tonight, and that is the lie that said God will always bless unity. Don't believe that. I hope you will somehow get convinced that it is not true. Uh, because there are Bible examples uh, that unity based on rebellion makes God angry. Amen. If you don't accept that from me tonight, I challenge you to read the story about the Tower of Babel. I ask you to look carefully at that example where the Almighty God commended them for their unity and talked about how that there was nothing going to be restrained from them because of this tremendous mindset that that it unified around a common cause, a common goal that was there. They said, we're going to build a tower. We're going to make a name for ourselves. Uh, ego was tightly intertwined uh, with all of their desires for unity that was going on at the Tower of Pebble there. But God said, I'll show you what I think about unity that is based upon rebellion. I'm going to scatter them. I'm going to change and confound their languages and send them to the four corners of the earth. So this type of unity, I don't ever have to deal with it again. Amen. God, God gets angry from unity that is based upon rebellion. God, hallelujah, also gets angry. With, rebel with unity that is based on compromise. Amen. Read the story of the golden calf, if you will. Amen. Get the implications of that story. 
as there, this group that was called the church in the wilderness. This group, church, if you please, were gathered together there. And Moses was on the mountain communing with the Almighty God. The Bible said there was music, there was dancing. Brother, they were all in unison. It was total cooperation. Everybody was doing it, going along with it. Nobody was rebelling against the plan of the compromise. Uh, that was going on. Uh, the Scripture said, however, God's people were naked like all of the other heathen uh, that were around them. Uh, a perfect scenario of unity. Uh, but they're stripping off their clothes. Uh, they're dancing to a heathen God. Uh, there they are, just having themselves a time uh, as the music is a blaring. Uh, and oh, I like the way this Bible does it. Uh, God always tells things just like they are. Uh, he said Aaron uh, had made them naked. Uh, God always puts the blame uh, where the blame belongs. Uh, he said it's not the people's fault. Uh, it's the minister's fault. Uh, it's the man of God. Uh, amen. That didn't teach them uh, that if you're a child of God, uh, you can't immodestly expose your body uh, anywhere, anytime, any place. Aaron made all kinds of excuses and said it was the people, the people, the people. God said, get off that nonsense. It's you, preacher. It's you. What they're wearing and what they're not wearing is you, big boy. Amen. So all they are is sheep. They need a shepherd. They need somebody to direct them. Amen. We've got a real life story here in the form of the life of the Apostle Paul. And I'm here to tell you tonight, this story is exactly what happens to every, every true apostolic preacher. Uh, not just a few. I'm talking about every fearless apostolic preacher. Amen. Has got to contend, uh, amen, with this unity conspiracy that happened here in the Scripture. Look at the New Testament pattern with me, please. Uh, you will see that apostolic preaching uh, always unifies the opposition. Amen. I'm telling you, apostolic preaching uh, always unifies the opposition. It's just got a way of getting them together when nothing else could get them together. Amen. It's got a way. Uh, amen. Yes, it does. Uh, read about Peter's message. Uh, amen. Acts chapter number 5. Uh, it said they were cut to the heart uh, and they took counsel to slay them. Uh, amen. Something about real, true apostolic preaching. Uh, you're not supposed to enjoy all of it. Uh, there is conviction that God uh, intends to bring uh, and walk your log uh, to bring you to a place of repentance. Uh, amen. Uh, Acts chapter 7, uh, Stephen unified the opposition. Uh -huh. You say, oh, I, I don't know, those, those radical preachers, they, they all got bad spirits. Well, read the seventh chapter. The Bible even said his face was glowing like an angel. Now, brother, you've got to stretch it pretty far to claim that Stephen had a bad spirit. But do you know his preaching, even with an angel's glow on his mug, didn't change the opinion of the opposition. Oh, they hated what he was preaching to them. I mean, they couldn't stand it. The Scripture said when it got all done that it cut to the heart and they gnashed upon him with their teeth. 
Now, I preached a few times. I thought folks were swallowing their teeth. <laughs> Woo! But if I want a truly apostolic ministry, I've got to be willing to unify the opposition. So much so uh, that when I'm preaching, uh, something in them says, Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut that guy up! Don't let him get in the pulpit! Don't you dare let him preach! Don't let him do it! Hey man, it always unifies the opposition. Hey man, oh, the powerful results of his ministry. Hey man, now the majority of them were already behind him. He had already been on his missionary tours. He had already, according to the Scripture, all of Asia had heard the gospel because of him. They had turned their world upside down. He had pioneered churches all over the known world that was there. And here they are, a proven apostolic that runs into some opposition from some other one God folks. Not Trinitarians monotheistic all the way down to their core. So we got to do something to discredit this guy. We've got to do something. What, what are you going to do? We'll tell lies on him if we have to. We can't stand. Amen. What he preaches, it brings light on the subject. Amen. It proves out what the Bible really says. And we can't stand it because we don't want to walk in that light. We don't want to be obedient to that light. We don't want to follow the Scriptures. Amen. And so they started telling lies on him. Can I tell you something? Your pastor ain't worth his salt if nobody's telling lies on him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If he's so smooth and so debonair, he's got it so smooth that everybody just loves him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ministerial council in the city is wanting to vote him in as the president. I mean, he's just so good at making everybody happy. Amen. I don't know what apostolic group he came from, but it ain't in the book of Acts. It's nowhere in the book of Acts. Brother, it's riots that were created in cities everywhere that he went. Amen. We can't stand that man and what he preaches and what he stands for. But the people were saying, bring it on, bring it on, Paul. We like it, we like it, we like it, whether anybody else does or not. Amen, amen. Read it, chapter 21. Boy, you talk about some high-tailed rumors going on around Paul. Amen. The captain there, he said, hey, hey, I've heard about you. You're that Egyptian leader of them 4,000 murderous men that you led out in the wilderness. He said, what, big boy? Egyptian. He said, I'm a Jew, and I'll tell you furthermore, I'm a Roman citizen. Oh, oh, you, you mean that was a lie they told about you? You, you, you mean that wasn't you? You're not really the rebel rouser that they painted you out to be? Huh? 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 <laughs> You're really not what all those stories I've heard about you. Ooh, friend, when you're an apostolic preacher, amen, the conspiracy is on to get you, is on to do everything in its power to silence your voice, uh, to stuff a sock in your mouth, uh, to assassinate your character, to do anything they can uh, to lessen your influence. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, 
oh yeah, I can just imagine uh, every backslidden rebel uh, from out of this church uh, as they read the newspaper article today, uh, amen, bragging on this church, uh, bragging on that man of God that's there, uh, and in their rebellious heart, uh, amen, uh, amen, God was saying, take that big boy, take that, uh, that's my church, uh, that's my man, he preaches truth. He stands for righteousness. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, we read verse number 10, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces. I got news for you, friend. They will dismember you limb by limb. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Amen. Other one God folks will. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've worn a full body cast long enough to know. Oh, yeah, they will. I guarantee you they will. And the Bible said in verse number 11, amen, the Bible said uh, what happened, uh, amen, that the night following, uh, the Lord uh, stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me uh, in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also uh, at Rome. Uh, he said, I got news for you, friend. Uh, don't take the tuck head. Uh, don't go running uh, in a corner uh, and say I can't stand the heat uh, that's being put on me. Uh, he said, get a smile on your face. Uh, amen. Uh, and be of good cheer because your ministry ain't nearly over yet. I've got more work for you to do. I want you to keep on preaching just like you've been preaching up until now. I've got a job for you. Uh He said, now, let me tell you something, Paul. He said, yesterday's troubles were bad. Well, they tried to pull you apart, pull you in pieces. He said, but if you had uh, any idea what those guys were planning for tomorrow. Oh, if you only knew they're holding a unity conference in your honor. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Paul. Uh, they, 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 they really are. They're, they're just crazy about you. Uh, amen. Uh, don't let it get you down, though, Paul. Uh, he said, oh, yeah. I can see Paul going to sleep that night, tapping his foot, uh, saying, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Boom, boom, boom. I got a feeling everything. The Holy Ghost done told me everything's going to be all right. It don't matter what they've done in the past or what they're doing in the future. God is going to be with His church. Amen. 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 So let's kick off the Unity Conference. The Bible said, Amen. I can just see those folks gathered around there, a leader of the group says, what, what are we religious Jews going to do with Paul? Somebody piped up and said, uh, well, uh, we better leave him alone because even Gamaliel told us Woo. that if it's not a God, it'll come to naught. But if it is a God, you better keep your hands off of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, somebody else piped up and said, but, 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 we can't fight against God. But we can't let that mouth keep running. You, you don't know how bad he's making us look. 
You, you just don't know, uh, amen, what he's doing uh, when he does what he does, uh, amen, and gets up there and preaches like he does. Uh, said, well, well, what do you mean? Uh, said, the worst part about it uh, is he preaches from the Bible. Whoa! We could uh, explain it away to our people uh, if he was using uh, philosophy uh, or something else. Uh, but that's all he does uh, is he preaches from the Bible. Uh, he preaches God's Word. Uh, and he's showing everybody else uh, how wrong we are, how off-base we are, uh, and how right uh, the Word of God is. Woo. The chairman said, uh, well, folks, folks, we're going to do anything about this. We, we've got to put a spiritual face on it, you know. Anybody willing to fast? Anybody willing to pray? Well, we've we, we got to make sure that, you know, nobody doubts that we're up to any kind of mischievousness at all, that we're anywhere out of the book. Let's put just a a real good religious front to all of this. Let's band ourselves praying for unity, fasting for unity. Ah, yeah. Let's show everybody how bad we want it. How bad uh, that we've got to have that. Uh, somebody piped up uh, and said, okay, I will. Uh, I'll pray. All this disunity he's bringing in the body uh, has got to go. Uh, I'll fast about it. Uh, yeah, we'll band together. Uh, come on, let's get it all together. And somebody said, well, 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 you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's kind of hard for me to fast. He said, what are the exact charges against him anyhow? Well, his preaching gives him away. We don't need to have a trial. The tape ministry will tell off on him. Or the scroll ministry, I guess they had back then. We got documentation from all over Asia. Philippi. We got it from Colossae. We got it from Corinth. We got it from everywhere this guy's been. We... We got the goods on him, boys. We got the goods on this guy. I mean, he is dead meat. Let's get real spiritual about it and then kill him. Because we don't want nothing to mess with the unity that we've had around here before he came along. Somebody said, well... Well, well I, I wasn't there. I didn't hear him preach. Uh, well, what, what did he preach exactly? Hey, Amen. Uh, somebody piped up uh, and said he is narrow-minded about the message. Uh, hey, Amen. Uh, I got the proof on him. Uh, when he was in Ephesus, uh, he wouldn't go to the ecumenical meeting. Uh, he said there's one Lord, uh, there's one faith, uh, and there's one uh, baptism. He doesn't accept any other baptism, any other faith, any other God. And a few hands of them holy sanctimonious fellows raised their hands. Well, if that's, he's that narrow-minded, I'll join in in the prayer chain. I'll be a part of the fasting. If, if that guy's that bad off. Because we don't want to offend any of our dear Baptist brothers. We can't have that. Because unity at any price uh, is what matters to us. Uh, we got to have it. Uh, somebody else said, uh, let me tell you, it ain't just that, friend. Uh, he is radical uh, about the gospel. Uh, over at Colossae, uh, he got so carried away one night uh, that he preached it so strong. Uh, he said, though we are an angel from heaven, uh, come preaching any other gospel. Uh, let him be a curse. A curse! Now, 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 the bad part about it is he said any other gospel. We could have handled it if he preached against the Hindus. 
if he pounded on the Muslims a little while and the Hare Krishnas and the Moonies. Not an eyebrow would have been raised in monotheism. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have fussed with him at all. But that guy, that guy believes they're cursed if they preach any other gospel. If they just differ with us on baptism and what uh, titles or names uh, are supposed to be used, uh, that guy said, no way. Uh, they are cursed. Uh, they are cursed. Uh, they are cursed by God. Are there any other volunteers? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, okay. You need some more proof, boys? Yeah, yeah. I'm still not convinced that it'd really be the will of God for us to stick a knife to his throat, slit his guts out over that. Well, let me tell you something else, brother over at Philippi. He's serious about godly living. The guy preached to them that if we're even going to call ourselves Christians, we got to depart from iniquity. He's trying to take that lovely, lovely, lovely title uh, that all the charismatics uh, gather under away from us uh, just because uh, we won't straighten up uh, in the areas of godly living. Uh, amen. Uh, you know that guy, uh, he said we've got to put away lying. Uh, we got to speak every man truth uh, with his neighbor. Uh, amen. We've got to have integrity in our life. Uh, we can't keep acting like Bill Clinton. Uh, hey, man, we got to tell the truth uh, so everybody will believe uh, we're telling the truth. And if we let him live, if we let that joker keep living, we can't keep on lying about how many got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> We just can't because he, 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 he's gun barrel straight. That guy said lion's going to send us to the pit. You, you see why we're mad at him? See why we can't stand the ground he walks on? You see why we wish his wife would put something else in his scrambled eggs for breakfast? See why we're hoping his life insurance policy's paid up. Somebody else spoke up and said, okay, we got 20, 22 now. Anything else on him said, oh, yeah, he's out of balance in that area of church government. <laughs> said that guy actually preached at Corinth to obey them and have the rule over you. <laughs> he actually believes uh, that the pastor has the rule uh, over the saints. What bigger heretic can you get than that? He actually thinks that the pastor's got the right to set the standard in the church and require the congregation to live by it. Oh, 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 he's one of those Jim Jones fellas, huh? Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, it's serious. We we got to get rid of him because we've been telling one another for a long time that the ministry is not to be the policeman. If he gets to preaching that, and remember the worst part is he preaches from the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. There's nothing we can do to counteract it. No matter what seminars we have, that guy's got the book on us. We can't stand it. Uh, I, I mean, to tell you, he's brave and bold. Uh, he told them at Corinth, uh, he said it, that fornicator that's in the church. Oh, <laughs> he said, put him out. Put him out. And you know good and well, uh, we can't put anybody out of the choir, no matter how they're living, uh, as long as they're paying their tithe, uh, as long uh, as they're good board members. Uh, we can't put anybody out. 
over lifestyle issues. Oh, no, no, no. We, we can't do that. Brother, you better pray every day of your life uh, for your pastor. You know why? You know why? Because God said, if you get too fearful to wear the badge, he said, I'm going to make an absolute monkey out of you in front of those people. You say, where did he say that? Read Jeremiah chapter 1, where Jeremiah said, God, I'm not sure. I can't speak. I'm a babe. I don't know if I belong in the ministry or not. And God said, let me tell you something, boy. Amen. Verse number 17. He said, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. Woo. He said in verse number 19, and they shall fight against thee. Get ready for it. You can't take the heat. Stay out of the kitchen. Because when you're up there boldly preaching uh, all of God's commandments, uh, there's going to be some carnal folks, Jeremiah, that are going to fight uh, against you. Uh, but don't you dare back up. Uh, I'll make a monkey out of you uh, in front of all those people uh, if you're not bold uh, about declaring the truth. Well, I told you I wasn't feeling tired. I don't know what there is about this pulpit. So we got 32 now, volunteers. Can, can we get some more? Is there any more witnesses about this guy? Yeah. Yeah. So, brother, he's too hard on other preachers who back up. Now, it's one thing if he just wants to preach holiness in his local congregation. But that joker, he is so nosy in other people's business. And some folks backed up, and he called them dogs. He didn't go to the same Bible seminary we went to. Or he would never use words like that. Oh, he's going to bring so much disunity in the body. God have mercy. we got to cut him out of the body. He actually called them dogs. Yeah, and you know what else he said? Some of our dear brethren that have said, you know, I've reconsidered some things. I've thought some things through, and I've reanalyzed them. Would you believe what his commentary was on that kind of stuff? He said if we build again the things we once destroyed, we make ourselves transgressors. He called our fellow brethren sinners. Sinners! transgressors. He called them sinners. Big boys, doesn't that make you mad? Doesn't that make you want to nail him? Doesn't that make you want to get him? I've got some good friends. They, they haven't backed up on it all. They, they've just backed up on a few things. They, they haven't backed up on it all. They're still pretty stout on the one God message. Uh -huh. But they've changed a little bit in the area of separation and holiness. What used to be wrong. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let me stop and say something here. We hear an awful lot of preaching, and thank God for every bit of it, how wrong it is for Trinitarians to sing and preach in our pulpit. And I concur 1,000%. But have we forgotten that just because somebody preaches one thing, if they're transgressing the Bible in the area of separation, and they're blindly leading their people down that trail, how can we stand in front of an almighty God when we put our condoning and blessing upon them simply because they believe one God? Now, I'm going to take it a step further, friend. If one God is all your criteria is, the devil's welcome in your pulpit. Ah, because he's the biggest one God believer that there is in the whole planet. Friend, he knows one God. 
backwards and forwards and forwards and backwards. I said, oh, man, I, I got to tell you about this tall guy. We ain't got quite enough guys gathered together here. Man, I got to tell you, he's way off base on separation and holiness. That guy, he thinks it really means come out from among them and be separate. He really believes that. The nut was he raised down under a rock in rural Louisiana? <laughs> Where did he come from? Believing that separation is an absolute must for God to be your God and you to be his people. That's what he preaches. That's what he preaches. I was sitting at a breakfast. I won't give you all the details. You figured out you're way too smart. A bunch of ministers was there. Some of them I hadn't been around for a long time. And they got to talking about unity. Unity. Matter of fact, they were talking so much about unity that they were talking about how right it was to have every other oneness preacher in that whole area preach in their pulpit. Bring their choirs to sing. Well, they put on robes, so hey, you know, it don't matter anyhow. They know what we preach, so they take off their earrings and, you know, they don't want to look offensive and so they just kind of blend right in. Oh, I wanted to scream. I thought, unity conference going on right here. We, we, we need to unite uh, with all of these dear precious brethren. You don't believe what Paul believed, friend. Amen. Paul said uh, that only after you come out and be separate uh, will God be your God. Will He call you uh, His people. Uh, only after, uh, amen, you live and embrace, uh, amen, the separation uh, that is preached in this Bible, uh, in the Word of God, uh, amen, uh, said, oh, let me tell you, that Paul, he's wild at all. Huh. If it just looks at the appearance of evil. I've had him. Some of you don't know my whole story, but I've had people in my church. I didn't go along with the gang, never have, never will. But I've had people in my church when video first came out that said, Pastor, we promise it's only for work. We promise. I've got to have it for my job. I've got to have it in my home. I've got to have it for education, continued job training. I've got to have it. Boy, did it ever get quiet in here. Did I, did I step out? Maybe, maybe I need to step on that sidewalk and preach to them cars out there. Hey, I've been there, done that, friend. Uh, I know what it's all about. Uh, Paul said, uh, if it's got the appearance of evil, uh, if your neighbors come over and think you watch Hollywood, uh, stay away from it. Uh, don't give anything uh, that's got the appearance of evil. <laughs> said he's worse than that, buddy. He even preached, hold fast to the traditions. That guy said that we're to even hold fast the traditions. He's from the dinosaur era. And we're the enlightened folks. We've studied enough in our lexicons to know that there ain't a scripture in the Bible. It said somebody's going to hell to wear a beard. And so since there ain't, we got enough other things to preach about than to preach about that, boys. And we decided we'd let a few of these things go because there's enough Bible. Oh, yeah. Preach standards still. But that joker's telling us you better hold fast even to the traditions that have been taught to you by word or epistle. You better hang on to those traditions. Oh, God. 
I'm so thrilled. There, Maria is here tonight. She was here last night. Uh, amen. At 12 years old, uh, my wife and I went into her home. Uh, she's a pastor's wife now in Denver. We went into her home uh, and taught home Bible study uh, to her mother, her father, her family that was there. And by the grace of God, uh, the family was one to God. Uh, amen. Brought into the church. Uh, and she was telling me, about coming by our church uh, to visit our church. Uh, and I thought, thank God. Uh, thank God. Uh, there wasn't a bit of fear in me. Uh, it said, I wonder if that lady that's a pastor's wife now uh, came back to the home church, uh, if things would be any different uh, than how they were uh, when she was a girl, uh, when she was in the church. Uh, thank God we're holding fast. Uh, amen. Uh, even to the tradition. That were taught by godly men. Yeah, but wait a minute, guys. We only got 37 of you. We need at least three more. Said he goes farther than he should. He actually names things. And you know how divisive that is when somebody names things. I mean, this joker at Corinth, he actually acts like God is concerned about hair length. He told our precious dear sisters that it's a shame for them if they cut their hair. He told He told our young men with their mod haircuts uh, that even nature teaches you uh, that it's a shame uh, for a man uh, to have long hair. Uh, brother, this guy gets on the clothesline uh, and he don't get off. Uh, he named it. Uh, he named it. And then he wrote a letter to Timothy. The younger generation. That guy ain't caught on yet. Uh, that the younger generation ain't quite as tuned in to the Chuck Wagon gang, uh, you know, and the Happy Goodman family uh, as what that old generation was. Uh, and they got to have, you know, we got to have some flexibility, uh, you know, to let them uh, have their generational distinctives uh, and let them come up uh, believing it different. Uh, but he got on to a young son of the gospel uh, named Timothy. Uh, and he named it. He said them women have got to have modest dresses on. He said there's no jewelry. No jewelry, Timothy. Amen. You've got to preach it to him. You've got to preach it just like we preached it. And boys, boys, let me tell you something. We've convinced all of our congregations that there's a difference between ornamental jewelry and the other kind. But this joker went so far to say it ain't just pearls you can't wear. Chokers and all that necklaces and all that stuff. This joker said you can't wear gold anywhere. And if that ain't messing up the unity of the body, God have mercy. He's expendable, guys. For Him to actually preach it like that, uh, amen, I thought I'd get a few more volunteers uh, out of you. Amen. He said it's a glorious church. Uh, he preaches it's without spot. Uh, it's without wrinkle. Uh, it's without blemish. Uh, it's without anything. They said, oh, 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 enough, 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 enough. All 40 of us are united. We're united. 
When's the next prayer meeting? Can we get together for a unity conference? And we are going to make this vow before God that we're going to purge all this disunity out of the body so we can stand united against it. Now, I've preached this tonight to tell you both saint and young preacher, if you're younger than me, you might would listen to a word or two. To preach to you, friend, that the day that you decide to take a stand against that kind of unity, they will mark a bullseye on your forehead. As men on this platform on the ten most wanted list. Oh, yeah. God, I heard he was sick. Lord, don't let him suffer. Take him, Jesus. Take him on home. Bless his soul, God. <laughs> Oh, swing low, sweet chariot. Uh, amen. Uh, this is what we've been praying for uh, for a long, long time. But oh, if there's something in your spirit uh, that hungers uh, for the real apostolic church uh, and you want to be a part of it, uh, there's some undeniable something uh, that said, I'm sorry, but I can't buy uh, it any of that unity conspiracy uh, that is directly contrary uh, to the Word of God. Uh, I can't buy it. Uh, I'm hungering uh, for a true apostolic church. A ministry like the apostles had. Be seated. I'm almost done. Let me tell you one more story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read recently about the penguins in Antarctica. And those penguins, you know, they live on that frozen tundra that's there, and there really isn't anything available for them to scavenge and eat. And so they have to congregate close by to where there is holes in the ice, where the ice is broken because that is their food supply. The only problem with that is the sharks know where the penguins have to go to get the grub. And so the sharks try their best to be in the close vicinity whenever one courageous penguin decides to take the plunge because they want to send a loud and clear message to all of his comrades <laughs> that you don't do that. You, you just don't do that. Oh, yeah. He don't look like a bird, does he? <laughs> them penguins gather up around them holes in the ice there and they just kind of congregate and bump up against one another. They start getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. Yeah. You can only eat off your neighbor's feathers long enough, you know. It don't quite do the trick. They just start getting hungrier and hungrier. One nudges the other one. Uh, after you, big boy. After you. Uh, after you. Uh, after you. Uh, come on, you preach it. Uh, you preach it. Uh, you're preaching tonight. You preach it. Uh, you preach it, buddy. Uh, you preach it. Man, I'm with you. 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 I'm behind you. A long ways behind you. A long ways behind you. Yeah, I believe everything you're saying, boy. Yeah, them old penguins know that them sharks, 
Man, they're rough. They're rough. Matter of fact, they had a story in the newspaper in Los Angeles. The boy was down there swimming, you know, out there. And uh, he saw this shark. It was a small shark that was there. And he reached out, actually thinking a little shark. You know, he ain't, ain't too big. I ain't got to worry about him. He bumped up against that little shark. And that little shark swung around and latched onto his chest. Buried his teeth in it. You might have read about it. They had to take the boy and the shark to the hospital to get the shark off of that chest. Them big sharks train them little sharks. They got training schools for them, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. They teach him how. Don't you let him by with that. Uh, if he bumped up against you, uh, if he preached something uh, that you don't believe, uh, amen, don't let him by with that. Uh, let's get him. Uh, let's gang tackle him. Uh, let's do everything we can. Uh, get Paul out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But eventually, eventually, one penguin hears his tummy growl for the last time. Woo! And he said, you know what? Fear is no match for hunger. Woo! Are you hungry for holiness? Are you hungry for righteousness? Are you hungry for godliness? Are you hungry for an apostolic ministry? Are you hungry for the anointing of God greater than you've ever had it before? Woo. Finally, finally, someone come to the music. I'll never quit here. Hey, Amen. No, oh, really, I'm done. He goes to the edge of that ice flow there. And he said, if I perish, I perish. Uh, one thing about it, they ain't going to find me with anorexia up on the bank. <laughs> it ain't going to happen to me yet. And he plunges down in the water. And he swims around. And he latches a hold of a big five-pound fish. And he swims back up and does a belly slide in between all of his comrades. And his buddies start gathering around. And they start saying, come on, yeah, give me some of that. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you, brother. I'm really with you. He said, out of my way. It Excuse me, please. Uh, excuse me, guys. Uh, pardon me. Uh, 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 I work for this, uh, and you ain't taking it away from me. Uh, you're not taking it away from me. Fear, keep standing, is never a match for hunger. When you get hungry enough for pure apostolic doctrine, Nobody can intimidate you. Nobody. You see, upon this platform, there are men of God. And I say it to you in deep sincerity. You knew the background of my wife and I. Neither of the churches that we went to in our teenage years would be anything remotely close to what you would call a holiness church. And when we married, we didn't have very many of the convictions that we hold today. But we went to meetings and we heard righteous, godly Pauls preach from the book. They preached Bible. They preached Bible to us. The sharks are out there to destroy every preacher that's gutsy enough to go for it. But there are some precious saints of God that are saying, Paul, preach to me. Preach to me. 
I'm not going along with that unity conspiracy. I, I believe the book. We are a separated people. Uh, amen. Preach to me. Uh, I've had Brother Westberg preach to me. Uh, and I've come to the altar uh, at a meeting and said, God, uh, I've never heard that preached before. Uh, but, oh, God, uh, I heard it. Uh, it was in the Bible. Uh, it was the Word of God. Uh, and I'm latching on to it. I don't care what anybody else says to try to criticize. To every preacher that is here, God's got the same message to give you that He gave to Paul. Be of good cheer. The unity conspiracy is going to flop. And my word is going to prevail. Preach it, Paul. Keep preaching it, Paul. Preach it everywhere you go. And if you're here tonight without the baptism of the Holy Ghost or without godly convictions in your heart, I'm telling you, friend, uh, your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, uh, they're going to try to intimidate you uh, from taking the plunge uh, because they'll pick your bones to pieces. Uh, amen. They'll criticize. Uh, they'll blast against you. Uh, but I challenge you in the name of the Lord. Make up your mind. I'm so hungry for a real experience from God. I'm so hungry to be a part of a true apostolic church. God will fill your hunger if you hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let's lift our hands. Magnify the Lord together. Praise God. Praise God.